Hi guys, Mark here. Welcome. This tutorial is going to show you how to make a protective water bottle sleeve or holder. Here is our holder up close. For me the defining feature of this project is this nice looking v-line on both sides of the holder. Other than that, we have a nice looking handle which is optional. We have fairly tight weaving through the entire holder, which ensures that the holder is rigid and keeps its form even after we remove our bottle. The bottom of our holder can be finished in many ways. Here I have a triangular finish. Here I have one which covers the entire bottom. To do our project, naturally, we're going to need a bottle to cover. In my case, I'm going to be covering one which has a capacity of half a liter, so about 17 ounces. For the cordage, I'm going to be using 550 paracord. For my specific bottle, I'm going to be using four strands for the handle, these are 6 feet long each. Other strands added after the handle are going to be 5 feet long each. To finish the bottom of the holder, a lacing needle is going to be used. The final two supplies are the classic scissors and lighter. First, we're going to form the handle. Grab four strands. Find the middle point. At the middle point, Tie a square knot, also known as the cobra knot. So the left strand, under 2 over 1. Right strand, over the top, under the left strand. Tying a half knot. Then, right strand, under 2 and over the left end. Left end, over the top, under the right strand. Tying our first square knot, also known as the cobra knot. Then, in my case I'm going to add three more on this side, and another three here at the top. So, I'm going to do it like this. The two ends on the sides are going to come together as the core. The left end again under two over the right end, right end over the top, under the left end. Then right end, under two, over the left end, left end, over the top, under the right end. Like this, adjust the size of this section here, then tighten up. Pull the two center strands in a bit to make everything look consistent. Then simply repeat. The two side ends form the core. Left end under two over one, right end over the top, under the left end. Right end 
under 2 over the left hand, left hand over the top under the right hand. Again adjust this section here. Pull on the two center strands like this. So we have two sections here already. Let's do one more. This is what I got so far. The center square knot and three more. I'm going to flip my handle around and to repeat the square knot three more times. So again, the side strands become the core. Then these two are used to tie the square knot. Two more times. One more time, the sides become the core, then we use the previous core to tie a square knot. So our handle. With the handle done, I'm going to fit it onto my bottle just to see how it looks. So I think the handle is big enough, so I'm going to attach it with a rubber band onto my bottle. This is optional, but I like to do it since I can work directly on the bottle. On the bottom of our handle, on both sides, we have a single square knot. This square knot is the first row in the body of our holder. So the first row has a single square knot, the second row has two, the third row has three, and so on. So we are adding a single square knot more to each row until the square knots coming from both sides of the handle join here. After this point, we're not going to be adding any additional square knots. So the number of square knots from here on out is constant all the way to the bottom. So, to begin the body of our holder, we're going to add 
an additional two strands to each side of our handle. So we grab a strand, fold it in half, place it to the side of your handle, then using the four ends, tie a square knot. So, left end under two over one, right end over the top, into the loop on the left, so over two under one. Tighten it up a bit, then continue right end under two over one, left end over two under one, tying our square knot. Tighten it up by first tightening the first half knot, then the second one, getting a nice tight square knot. Pull on the middle strands as well, to remove any excess slack between the first and second row. Then, repeat the exact same thing on the left side. So, you grab a strand, fold it in half, place it next to the existing two strands, so we have four ends. Tie a square knot. So left end, under two over one, right end, over the top, over two, into the loop, so under one. Tighten up a bit, then right end, under two, over one, left end, over the top, over two, under one. Again tying our square knot. Tighten up the first half knot, then the second one, pull on the middle strands as well. So the second row. We've done this side of the handle, rotate, repeat on the other side. So, the second row is complete. The third row is done pretty much the same way. We add two strands to the sides and use the four existing strands at the center to tie the third square knot. So, let's do it. So the left side,
the right side And the third square knot at the center tied with the existing four strands. So, the third row. If we take a look, first row, a single square knot. Second row, two square knots. Third row, three square knots. We do the same thing on the other side of the handle. So, the third row on both sides. Let me show you how to do one more row. The fourth row. Again, we add two strands on the sides. Then we tie two additional square knots at the center.
So the fourth row, a total of four square knots. Repeat on the other side. So the complete fourth row. One square knot at the top, two in the second row, three in the third row, four in the fourth row. Naturally the fifth row is going to have five square knots. If you're going to be doing a sixth row, it's going to have six square knots and so on. So we're going to be adding square knots until these two sides here meet up. At this point, we join the two sides and continue with the number of strands that we have. So after this point here, where we join the two sides, we are not adding any additional strands. In my case, after five rows of square knots, I've brought the sides here close enough together so that I can join them. Again, I do this using square knots. Then the other side exactly the same way. With the sides joined, we are going to fill out the rest of our row using up the rest of our ends. So four at a time, tying our knots in between the knots of the previous row.
After filling out our entire row, so in my case the sixth one, we're going to continue with the next row. So you can start at any spot and you simply grab the four ends that are in between two square knots in the previous row. So two from the left, two from the right, then you tie a square knot. So that's all we're going to be doing in our future rows. As you can see here, this row has square knots here, the next row has the square knots in between the square knots of the previous row. Do row after row in the same pattern. After a while of weaving, I reached the bottom of the bottle. For this specific holder, I'm going to continue with one to two more rows here, which are going to close off the bottom of the holder, preventing the bottle from slipping out. After that, I'm going to do my finish. After a couple of more rows, which cover the bottom nicely, we're going to pick out a single strand out of each square knot. So, in my case I have a total of 10 square knots at the bottom, so I'm going to gather up a total of 10 strands. These strands are one of the two working hands coming out of the square knots, more specifically the ones facing up. So you can see that this working hand is facing up out of the square knot. So gather 10 of these, the rest we're going to cut and melt. After cutting and melting the majority of our ends, we're going to be using the remaining few, in my case 10, in order to tie an over 2 crown knot. This is done by grabbing one of the ends, passing it past two of your ends, then repeating with the next end. So the next one passed two, the next one passed two, and so on. The last two ends are done a bit differently. The one before last is going to pass under the first strand used. The last one is going to pass under two here, like this, finishing up our over two crown knot. We finally secure our ends a bit further by grabbing each of the ends, attaching a lacing needle, then passing the end through a square knot found nearby. So like this, just for extra security. Grab the next end, do the same thing. Through a square knot found nearby. Do this with all of your ends. This concludes our tutorial. I hope that I made it clear enough. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.